Welcome back, everyone. We're here today on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday talking about cold exposure and its link to fat burning. I find this type of research to be really powerful. I think it's one more tool we could all use in order to not only, again, this is not just about weight loss or body transformation, but it's also transforming our health. Because as uh, what we're going to talk about here today is the topic is actually transforming, believe it or not, the type of fat tissue you are holding in your body. So we're holding this inflammatory, estrogen producing, cortisol producing, toxic producing, negative negative fat, which is called adipose tissue, so you may hear me say that today, with a healthier version that can actually decrease cardiovascular risk and potentially vascular issues like blood pressure in the future. So pretty amazing, I mean, absolutely amazing um, research on this. And so I simply want to get into today's topic, which is how cold exposure can actually increase fat burning. Now, I've talked about the topic of cold exposure before. So I want to just give you a, a quick synopsis on all the research I've done, but also the clinical relevance that I think might be important for you. Too many people in this space, and many of them are brilliant, are recommending something for everyone. So there are a lot of people out there recommending cold exposure for the world. I'm not sure that that is necessarily a good idea. I know specifically it is not a good idea for a lot of people that are on more of the catabolic spectrum of body types or body weight. That would be, excuse me, more of the vata body types or the ectomorph body type. These are people that lose weight easier then gain weight. These are people that are the hard gainers from exercise. These are people that might um, lend themselves to a little bit more anxiety or overwhelm or overly sensitive. Those people, at least in the beginning, do not want to, as what's being promoted right now, hop into a cold plunge or even do cold showers that are going to do what? increase norepinephrine, increase dopamine, potentially increase cortisol, potentially drop blood sugar levels. So we, uh, we want to understand that every human constitution, which is our body type, are not necessarily the same. So for those people that I just mentioned, they can get many of the same benefits of cold exposure by, and we're not talking about fat burning, right, because it's a different type of person but they can get it through heat. And so for those people, the heat may be a lot more calming for their body. And maybe not even at the 180 degree dry sauna as the finished sauna. Maybe they'd do better at the 120 to 140 or 145 infrared saunas. So I simply share that with you just as a side note. I have many podcasts going back and forth on these, but I always say with to you that there is benefit in all of these modalities. Now, the benefit from cold exposure, if you learn how to do the breath work with it, can actually help to calm the sympathetic nervous system. So in time, I believe many people could take advantage of this, but it shouldn't necessarily be their first step. Now, those people that do not produce as much norepinephrine, they don't produce as much dopamine, are often the kapha body type or the endomorph. They tend to be a lower on the stimulating sympathetic nervous system. They tend to gain more weight rather than lose weight. They're more anabolic. So again, when you start to understand the different constitutions of the body, then you begin to say, oh, well, it's not everything. It's not all for one. It's, oh, this individual has this imbalance, meaning that if they use these lifestyle modalities, the whole de-stress protocol, right? Diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically proven supplements and success mindset. If they use that for their constitution, well, they'll begin to get back in balance. So I'm here today to share this for people that are not at their ideal body weight. And I'm not talking about going from like 14% to 12% or 10%, right? I'm talking about your uh, BMI is, is, let's say, at least 25 plus, but probably 29 plus, that you maybe need to lose 30 to 50 pounds is what you're looking for or more. Well, this cold exposure can be highly beneficial. And I'm going to share with you three different ways uh, right now. So What's interesting is this, and I'm going to give you the uh, direct studies as well if you want to go a little bit deeper on this, but there's been a lot of studies now on cold exposure. And the most interesting part for me in terms of like a healthy way to lose weight is that cold exposure has the potential to change, right? It has the potential to actually change your adipose 
tissue type. So when we look at this, I'm going to give you direct quotes. There's several studies showing that um, there is potential health benefits of brown fat, one of several types of adipose tissue that include white, brown, or beige adipose tissue, and the excess fat and calories stored as white in white adipose tissues where brown and beige adipose tissue are more thermogenic. Let me translate that into more human speak, is that the you want less white adipose tissue, okay? You're going to store a whole lot of toxins in it, okay? It's going to produce more estrogen, more cortisol, potentially more inflammation. The more brown fat, and we can call it beige, but really the more towards you move towards brown fat, it's the more thermogenic. We're actually going to burn more calories. And in recent studies, it actually showed that those individuals with a higher percentage of brown fat had a much lower risk, so significantly, cl clinically significant um, factors for less risk of cardiovascular-based issues, even if they were overweight. So why is that remarkable? Because two people that are both, let's say, 50 pounds over their ideal, you would say, well, both would be at greater risk for cardiovascular issues, which, again, you would be correct most of the time. However, those people with more brown fat, more brown adipose tissue, would actually be at lower risk than their counterparts, right? Those people that are 50 pounds overweight, but have more white adipose tissue for having cardiovascular disease. And cold exposure, it said in this study, is, best, is the best known way for increasing brown fat. It's interesting because cold exposure now, I would say, is one of two that's why you have to take every study you read with just a little grain of salt. It just because it depends on what it's promoting. So this is promoting cold exposure. I like to stay unbiased. So cold exposure is a great way, probably one of two best ways for converting white adipose tissue to brown fat, right? So increasing brown fat. The other way is with, and we know this because we know that it helps burn visceral body fat as well, is high intensity interval training, right? So this is sprint interval training. This is um, uh, vigorous short burst exercise. So I do want to add that. Again, I don't want to, that's not today's podcast, but uh, that is clinically significant as well. All right. And I'm actually going to get to that in point three in just a moment. So the second one I want to share with you is one more point as to why cold exposure works. Because again, we didn't always know why cold exposure was helping people to burn body fat when everything else remained the same. Well, what they looked at was that they had uh, volunteers actually wear a cold vest. So this is a vest that has circulating water in it that goes around their stomach as well, where the body fat was being held. And they had that water circulating for two and a half hours. The water temperature was 57 degrees to 62 degrees. That may not seem cold, but trust me as someone who swims in the ocean in the summer in Maine, when it's at the high 50s, low 60s, it's cold. It's real cold. And so that was a longer period of time. Now you could extrapolate the data and say, well, what if you did a cold plunge that was in the high 30s or 40s for less time. And, and I think that future studies will show that is also beneficial, all right? But again, I'm just quoting what we have right now. So in this study, cold exposure led to adipose tissue browning and improved fat metabolism via the stimulation of vitamin A, which was actually released by the liver. So this is really important because I love the data that's pulled out from this. Now, a lot of people might then market you 25,000 IUs, 50,000 IUs, 100,000 IUs of vitamin A. Don't do that. All right, that is not what you want to do. It is the cold exposure that stimulated your own natural vitamin A reserves that seem to have helped with this conversion. So yes, get good vitamin A on a daily basis from a beta carotene based source. Make sure you do get enough, but we don't need to supplement high doses of vitamin A, that's for sure. All right, the last one is this. So I, I love this study as well because it showed that uh, high intensity interval training, which does work, we know, when combined with cold temperature exposure, worked even better. 
So if you are doing your, I don't know, let's just say uh, bike interval sprints, or you're doing a body weight, high intensity interval training, whatever it might be, and you are in a cold environment, let's say like you were working out, out uh, working out outdoors during the winter, that would actually improve your body's fat metabolism and help to create more brown fat. Again, this is now clinically proven. Interesting that they found a caveat to this, and that is when exercise, even high high intensity interval training, was done after food consumption. So one more tip I may give you is that if you are looking to lose weight, which I mentioned this many, many years ago as well, because we've, we've been doing this now for 25 years. So again, I love that this makes it into the clinical data after a while. Uh, but again, I'll tell you myself and uh, not just me, thousands of my colleagues are doing this and, and you will see it in textbooks, right? 10 years from now. Again, doesn't mean that we're anything special. We're not looking for a gold star, but always remember before things make it to the textbooks, they're already being done. So work with a great practitioner, find someone that's good for you. But here's the thing. Here's a nice little caveat. If you eat before your workout within a couple hours, it does it negates the ability to transform, uh, let's say, white adipose tissue to brown fat. So, just wanted to share that with you. I think that's a good takeaway. I do believe that if you're looking to uh, lose weight, that you do want to not have a meal in your body for two to three hours before that. That's typically what we recommend for our weight loss clients. There's always caveats to that, um, but that is that. So just wanted to share with you, there's a, a few different ways to go about this cold exposure. Um, there's the cold plunge, which is becoming much more popular nowadays. There's literally going into uh, a cold pool or a, co- a cold ocean or anything like that uh, during the cooler months of the year, of course. And there is simply exposure for doing cold showers. I have previous podcasts on this. I don't want to go into how to get your cold exposure today. But if you're interested, if this interests you as adding one more weight loss, fat burning, metabolic based tool, I will link up those previous shows at stephencabral.com forward slash 2301. stephencabral.com forward slash 2301. Hopefully the show was helpful. If it was, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. 